one of the ways that I like to describe my work is about interconnectedness. And I, I believe that everything around and that all beings and all animals, all trees, all everything is all interconnected. It, we're all one thing. Uh, it's tough to imagine that because we seem so separate, but the work that I make ultimately is an attempt to point to that ethereal, unmanifested realm from which we all come. On, uh, what was it, July 21st, the building, the apartment building that my wife and I lived in in Manhattan for years, burned down. Uh, it, was, it was exciting and crazy. We were home, it was late in the evening. We had to scramble to get dressed and we barely had enough time to escape out the fire escape as the apartment was filling with black smoke around us. That affected my work a great deal, no doubt. Uh, but um, if anything, it probably just forced me to imagine new ways of working and find new ways and new avenues. When one door closes, another one opens. And so uh, there have been as many blessings in my life as there have been tragedies, and that seems to always be the case. Perhaps the work that I'm most known for are the sculptures that I make with latex balloons. I use thousands of latex balloons and assemble them in ways that become amazing forms that relate to life and uh, all sorts of organisms that you find everywhere in the world uh, or even in our own bodies. Uh, I also use plywood like what you see behind me here or perhaps even the plastic that I use to wrap my sculptures uh, has become a material that I find uh, transformational. Well, this, this sculpture is a continuation of a body of work that I started sketching and thinking about in 2005. Uh, I had been traveling a great deal and making ephemeral sculptures with latex balloons all over the world, and I, I found myself at a cafe in Barcelona making some sketches of something that could be a massive form, but could be held together all just with plywood. The way that the, the sculptures, of the latex balloon sculptures are made, uh, they seem to defy gravity. And people are amazed that these massive forms can hold their structure just balloons, no rigid framework that holds it up. And when people see the wood sculptures that I've been making now since 2005, they think, and they ask me, is this to put balloons on? Is this how you make your balloon sculptures? So it's, it's clear to me uh, from hearing the feedback that there's a relationship between the two works, that there's the, the forms somehow come from the same place. There's something that's quite awesome and powerful about encountering a form that is otherworldly, something you've never imagined, something that no one's ever seen before. When you encounter something like that, there again is the potential for surprise. When I first began putting latex balloon sculptures in the subway, that was an easy way to surprise people because you wouldn't expect to see that there. But when you come into a museum and you see something like that, it's not quite as surprising. But if you can assemble something in a museum space that's much larger than the portal to come in, then becomes that, that mystery, that awe. How did this come here? How did this become what it is, and then it causes us to reevaluate our own self and perhaps everything that we've known, at least about the material that we're looking at, all the, up until that point in our lives. I can't even believe that this is my life and that this is what I get to do. It's very exciting.